If you sell anything business to business, the video you're about to see is going to be tremendously valuable for you. So for context, once a month, one of our private client groups meets up with me for our call review. And so one of our salespeople who's in our salesperson mastermind submitted a call and it was basically selling a lead generation service to gyms. So I broke down the call, some things he did well, didn't do well, and also re-scripted a lot of what I would have done on the call on this very call and the recording you're about to see now. So we'll go ahead, splice over to that recording. Let me know what you think, subscribe, and uh, comment below with your thoughts. All right, so let's get into this. Uh, we're recording, right? All right, whose call is this? It's me. Who's me? Dan, Dan Schauer. Boom. All right, bro. Well, we're going to dive in and get your call. Cool. Paper ready for you so I can take some notes and um, make sure we're getting everything settled. So, so while I'm doing that, man, like, fill me in. Like, what, what can I help you guys out with? Um, well, uh, okay. So, okay. All right. So let's go back a little bit. Run over there. So, Hey man, looking forward to chatting with you. Um, like just getting a piece of paper ready for you so I can take some notes and um, make sure we're getting everything settled. So, so while I'm doing that, man, like fill me in. Like, what, what can I help you guys out with? Um, well, uh, okay. So, I think I talked last week to uh, uh, I think it was Josh, and he, yeah, he yeah. told me a little bit. Um, yeah, so, uh, got a small gym, our price point is super high. All right. Okay. That was okay. I mean, I, I would be a little bit more, I'm not a big like rapport -y guy here where you're like going to be super chummy with them and fake, but I do think you could have your energy just seems like a little low. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was 10 minutes late to the call coming off another one. So I was like, let's, let's hit it. But yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I know they're on let's hit it. I just mean your energy seems a little bit low. Like you're like, well, like, you know, you, you were just talking like real, 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 real slow. I don't know what my computer is. Why my computer is doing that. So uh, just a little bit more like, I mean, just how I'm talking with you is kind of like not high energy, but it's like, I'm here. You know, I, it's the only way I'd explain it. Um, uh, 325 for unlimited training. That's my thing. Um, cool. I'm here right now. Uh, right. Okay, so again, like, I know you didn't frame the call, and like, you know, it's not necessarily, it's, you don't have to frame the call, okay? So a lot of people, like, teach that you shouldn't do it. I typically say you should for most people because, for people who are newer, and I'm not saying you're new, I have no idea, but for people who are a little bit newer, it gives them a little bit more control over the entire call, okay? So it just is one of those things that it kind of really helps you, like, helps them understand where you're going to take the call. It, it helps you feel like you're a little bit more in the driver's seat because the issue with not framing the call is if you don't do that, you have to make sure the questions you're asking all have context and they all know why you're asking the questions you're asking. Okay, so if you don't like, I don't typically do it, but what I'll also do is I'll pre-frame little tiny parts of the call. So I'll be like, hey, let's talk about your lead generation for a little bit so I can understand X. So question, all right? So I, personally, man, like number one, if I would have started off this and I was you, I don't know your experience level, but I, I don't think a frame the call is bad. So I'd be like, hey, John, what's up? Uh, dude, totally sorry for being late, man. You know, I just had this like crazy thing happen on my last call. So I was just running a little bit over, but dude, I'm right here with you. Do you have a clean sheet of paper? Um, something to take notes with, ready to dive in? Amazing, dude. Okay, cool. We'll get right to it. Just so you know how this call is going to go. Basically, the main thing I just want to do is understand your gym, how your acquisition and your marketing is working right now. Also, like how your fulfillment and your product suite's working for your gym. And just based on that, figure out, you know, what's working, what's not working and see how we can potentially fit in there. And if we can, I can definitely go into what we have going on over here, or if not, you know, we can help you maybe give you some homework or point you in a different direction. Is that fair? All right. So you just use the most standard one in the book, like nothing advanced about that. And then you got to go right to the problem, right? Like you didn't ask anything about the problem. So like immediately I'd be like, gotcha. So like, I know, uh, Derek, 
because this guy was set by a setter. It sounded like I know you talk with Derek. He kind of gave me a little bit of thirty thousand foot view. But for you, I just want to hear it like directly from yourself. Like, what would you say? I guess is like the 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 biggest challenge that you have in your gym right now, or like what's not working the level of truly feel like it could be or that it should. Right? You got to do it with that tonality as well. Okay. And, and you know, could you use a different question? Potentially, it's fine. But the main thing is right away, we want to get to the problem. Like, why are we here? What is the gap? What is the problem? What is the unfulfilled desire? Right? We have to, there's seven beliefs the prospect needs to have to buy, right? You guys know this pain, doubt, cost, desire, money, support, trust. We have to start with the pain. Okay? Because all of the other six beliefs are predicated on the pain. Now, you're asking, like, how many members do they have and group coaching? So maybe you, you end up asking this in two seconds. And if you do, it's not the end of the world. Okay, right. You're, you're there basically. But just remember, I always like to start with the pain, understand why they're here. I'll ask any other background I need, and then I go into the rest of the call. Right now, it's 53. Uh, I thought the pandemic was 120. Okay, that's right. So that's what we're trying to do back here. Right. What have you guys been doing? Just kind of trying to get back to that point. Um, you know, we've been really um, trying to reach out to the numbers, getting back in. Uh, not much. We've got a little like, paid social stuff uh, on, I think it was Facebook that didn't work. Um, we had never done any marketing before, so it's all been word of mouth. Right? We've been open for 18 years and it's all been word of mouth. Wow. Yep. What changed? Uh, it's all okay. pandemic hit, and you know, our, our people at 3.5 months, like our avatar is million dollar plus household income. Um, they're in their 50s, so over the course, it's a perfect storm of uh, pandemic hit, so they couldn't afford it, but they kind of built gyms in their homes. So they went to Peloton. They moved to their secondary home in, you know, LA or Florida or wherever. And then their kids during this time, most of them uh, either went to college or graduated college. So their life has just changed drastically. Um, and so that's, that's where most of our numbers are like. Uh, like. Got it. Okay. So uh, when, when did you guys try the marketing? So we applied for a grant. I can't remember the name of the, of the nonprofit. But we got a grant. It's part of the grant. It was business consulting. And they convinced us this is probably in like March to try a month of paid, paid marketing or paid social. March of this year? Yeah. And it was like 350 bucks a month, and they did it for two months. And it was, we didn't see one, and we didn't see someone shit on our website for two months. So 350 months, like, what did that mean go towards? Nobody handles it. But um, I think it was, uh, I want to say, it was eight social. So I think it was on Facebook. Uh, and I don't know exactly what it was. I honestly don't. Mm -hmm. I can't say if it was a Facebook ad or what it was. I never came up with a specific ad that I was there. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's all. I can ask it right now. If you guys don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think it would be helpful two months of the morning. What is her role as comparison to yours? Um, let me text her up because we're going to do the same place right now. Okay. okay. Uh, so I, she's, she probably works in the business maybe 30% of working in the business, probably like 5%, and she just was trying to be helpful uh, doing this paid social team working. And uh, I just texted her, she'll probably be back in the middle. Um, but I guess we've got, uh, it's a small thing, 5,000 square feet. Uh, let's see, we have one, two, three. Um, she said, sorry, no, she said it was just ads. She never saw it. And then she go back, we get $900 for that. So we must have done it for three months. Gotcha. No means, huh? No. And she never saw the ads. So who's doing it? Um, yeah. Are you taking notes? Yeah. Where? Pen and pad. Oh, it doesn't look like you're taking notes. No. Uh, you need, yeah. Taking notes is one of the most important parts of your sales call. So, like, make sure you guys go through the how to take notes training. It's in the training, but it's a very, very important part of the sales call. Ads. Um, yeah, that's the name of the company that we use. Interesting. Never saw the ads. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, anything else you guys have been trying? Like, what you guys are now doing? Yeah, I mean, your, your question asking is like, eh, you know, it's kind of how I feel about it. So, like, here's the question flow you want to ask with this guy, okay? You want to say, what's the biggest challenge? What's not working level truly for a Obviously, it sounds like what this guy is going to say marketing. He really never said it, though. So it's like you just kind of like implied it. Does it make sense? So he says, well, dude, you know, we're just trying to get customers, we're trying to find marketing work, blah, 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 blah. right? But but who knows? He could have said something else. He could have been like, dude, we got to figure this out in 90 days or fucked. Like, I don't know. Like, so what's the biggest challenge? What's on working level? Truly feel like it could be that it should. Okay. That's the first one. Then you pro. Okay. Then after you probe a little bit, and probing is, okay, tell me more. Okay, when you said this, what did you mean? Okay, great, blah, 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 right, whatever. 
And then what you do after that is I would hit the background questions. So like, you might need to know, like, what are they offering? What is the price? What is the location of the gym? I would imagine that is the main stuff. You know, I know for like, if I'm selling coaches, I want to know what they're selling, how they're selling it and the price point, right? So like how, you know, the other thing is current customer acquisition, right? And so I'll end off here. And then right after that, what I want to do is like the problem is going to be marketing for this guy, right? So then, but you know, even if it wasn't, after I isolate the problem, I want to see what they're trying to do to fix the problem now. Okay. So he's going to say it's marketing. I'm going to say, okay, great. You know, and, and it kind of parlays with this question here, obviously. Right. So like, what are you doing to acquire customers? Now, now the issue with this is that like, you know, you could say a bunch of stuff and you, you're trying to probe and get the pain. And then sometimes like, like when I saw real estate agents, uh, the issue was, is that I would say, well, what are you trying to do to get leads now? And they'd be like, well, I'm doing everything. I'm doing Zillow, Realtor.com, I'm doing Homes.com, I'm doing, uh, you know, sphere, I'm working my sphere of influence. I'm sending mailers. I'm running Facebook ads. I'm doing SEO. Like these guys would name like 11 things. And you know, when I was a newbie, I would try to be like, oh, well, like, is that working out? Or how's that going? How much did you spend? What returned it? Like I was trying to like, just, I don't know. It was like, I was trying to probe those and try to get to the pain. Like, well, is that not working for you? You know, stuff like that, right? Here, here's the best way to do it. So you ask other acquiring customers now, he might say, well, we tried this, we tried this, we hired an agency, da, 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 da. Gotcha. So you try to quite a few things, right? Let's just kind of break this down. How many, and I don't know the terminology for gyms. Maybe it's like, how many new people did you enroll into a membership? How many memberships did you sell last month? right? Whatever it is. Let's just say it's memberships. So, okay. Let's just take uh, June. How many memberships total did we set, uh, sell in June? Gotcha. And how many opportunities did we have in June in the first place? So like how many opportunities did we have in terms of sit downs of potential members and how many did we sell? Gotcha. And then how many, how much did we spend on, on advertising, if anything? Okay, great. What about whatever the last one is? Uh, June, May. Okay. Okay. What about the month? And you can go, sometimes it's like, you know, if there's just nothing, you, you usually don't need to go more than two months back. But if, if, if it's kind of an interesting situation and they're kind of doing okay, and then sometimes I go three months back to get a full picture. And then someone to say, like, basically, so it's how many memberships did you sell last month? Right. Out of how many opportunities? Okay, great. And let's say he's got like 20. He's like, oh, I got 20 opportunities. Right? Oh, okay, great. So those 20, where did those come from specifically? Because now, was it just word of mouth? Was it referrals? Was it just foot traffic? See what I mean? It's like, where did those come from specifically? That's what's really going to tell us what, what marketing is working right now and what's not. So where did those come from specifically? How much on ads? Okay, so then I can calculate the cost per opportunity, right? What price point? Where they sold at? Gotcha. And so once we know, let's say it's ten memberships at a price point of four hundred bucks a month. Gotcha. So we had four k new revenue in June. Yes. Gotcha. What was total revenue in June? Cash flow. What about what about May? Okay, great. And that's how many members active right now? Oh, okay, great. So you know you're at about like 70k a month with let's say it's like 70. I'm just making stuff up here. 175 active members. How many members are active right now? Okay, so you're doing about 70K a month, 175 members at 400 bucks a month, great. All right, How, and then like right then, now, hopefully this ends up refreshing here. Okay, great. So we'll see where you left off here. So right, we got isolated the biggest challenge. Let's say it's marketing. Then we get the background questions. Then we go, how are they trying to fix the problem now? 
okay? Then we get to, we, we kind of, by the nature of finding out, especially if it's a business, how they're trying to fix the problem now, then what happens is we also figure out their revenue, which is part of like what we need because we need that starting point, right? And so right when we're here, what I'd also ask is, gotcha, okay, and what's profit? Like after everything, like what do you, what is the actual profit of the company? Or you can see what's profit margin. And then after that, you're like, okay, so you're making this amount of profit. Profit margin is a little bit less invasive. And then I'd also ask like, okay, and out of that, are you paying yourself anything? Or like, do you just pull out the profit or do you pay yourself a salary? How does that work? So I'm just bam, 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 bam. Like I'm just getting everything, okay? And then what I'm gonna do here is like, once we chunk down like this, and we, we go over the opportunities, where they're coming from, what price point we get, kind of get the lay of the land, right? We also know all this stuff. I'm gonna say, gotcha. Okay, so it's all pretty obvious. Marketing is the main issue. He's gonna be like, yes. Okay, and then I'll say, gotcha. Well, how long has that been going on? Like, how long has this been the main bottleneck? Okay. And then, so he's like, oh, it's been going on for a long time. Gotcha. Like, well, how long have you been in business? Five years. Gotcha. I mean, has this been an issue the entire time? Right. So you see how I just did that? It's like, you got to get a, you got to get a time frame. So let's say he says that. Then I'm going to say, is my man still here? Here? He was on my screen. Oh, yeah, there he is. He's still here. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I get how long has it been going on? And then I say, gotcha. Well, dude, I mean, it's been going on for, you know, three years now. Uh, what have you tried to do to fix this in the past, if anything? Like, I know you mentioned, like, you know, Facebook ads and, and also your, like, referral campaign earlier that, that's kind of okay working for you now. Like, what else have you tried? And you're going to get, especially a gym owner like this, you're going to get all this. Well, oh, I tried this, I tried this, I tried social, I tried this, I tried this, I tried this. You know, all this different type of stuff. Okay. What you want to do first is you want to just flush everything out that they've tried. And with, with somebody like this, a prospect like this, there's going to be two main categories. There's going to be uh, marketing type stuff, like a marketing agency or a marketing program or like a marketing service or something like that. And then there's going to be like coaching. So you want to make sure you flush out both. Okay. Because I don't know if you're selling coaching, but if you are, it's like, you should, if you're not selling coaching, it doesn't matter. But if you're selling coaching, you need to know if, what they tried marketing wise, what they tried coaching wise. You flush all of that out. Then you need to say, okay, I mean, you know, depending on what it is, if you go into the solution question section, it gives you a bunch of questions to ask through that. But depending on what he's tried and why it hasn't worked, you have, you can ask some questions to understand what's going on because you know what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to position what you're selling against what he's tried in the past. Right, so that they understand why it's going to be different. Does it make sense? Right. So, so I'm going to put here. We ask our solution questions. It's kind of there's a whole list of these. If you guys go to advanced questions, or no, it's called asking skill questions advanced in the training. That has a tab called solution questions. Has every everything and everything you need in terms of really getting okay. What have they tried in the past? And you just really want to get your you get an angle where you could position your thing to be different, right? Like if they try coaching, then you could position it to where maybe, maybe they tried coaching, didn't get support. You can position your coaching. So it has like the best support. You get the point, right? Just sort of depends on what it is. Now we ask solution questions then we ask the doubt question. So we say, it's like, how long has this been going on? I've been the main bottleneck. He's like, well, I'll do probably the entire time I've been in business, probably about five years. Okay, dude, well, what have you tried in the past to fix this, if anything? Wow, I mean, you have tried a lot. Like, I guess, what do you think has been the biggest thing keeping you from, like, figuring out on your own? Or, like, what's been in the way? Now, at this point, this question might be a little bit overkill, but I typically like to throw in there. I just want to make sure I'm not going to get a DIY. And then, after I've flushed out the problem, I've stretched it of how long it's going on. And then I've also gone through what they've tried in the past. Do it. I'm going to say, I'm going to ask my why now question, right? Which is going to be... Can I ask you, okay, wow. I mean, can I ask you a personal question? You know, uh, Dan, you've been doing this for, uh, like, I mean, you've been in business for five years now, right? And I mean, dude, you've been through like a dozen marketing programs. 
So I mean, you've been through this, you've been through this, you've been through this. Um, obviously, I know you want to bring your business, but you know it's 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 tough and it, it's definitely a challenge for you. I mean, what about getting your your company to the point where you have that marketing system in place to where you can pull a lever, get new clients coming in at will? I mean, I guess like what has you keeping on, keeping up? Like, what about that is is in particular for you um, so important? Okay, so I would flavor it something like that. Like I, even with a little bit of stuttering and kind of the stumbling, uh, it just softens it, right? So you ask that one, and then he says, whatever he says. Then you say, great. And, 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 and is there any other reason this is important now though? Now, the nice thing is, the thing is what you have with this guy, dude, he's a, he's a gym owner. Um, he's fucking probably, uh, with businesses, like obviously they want to grow and they're obviously in pain. So usually if you, if you nail the pitch, if you understand the problem and you nail the pitch, they're going to buy. Right. So it's not like you have to get this whole emotional thing going on, but it does help if you could do that. Now, the other thing I would do in this section, now that I think about it is when around here, I would say, and gotcha. So um, obviously, okay, you're paying yourself this. Now, what is like your responsibilities? Like, what are you actually doing, right? You get his responsibilities. And then you get, okay, great. Um, and how much time are you, well, how much time would you say you're working in the, in, in the company right now? Like how many hours are you working? Okay. okay. And then right after this, yeah, you, you had, oh, okay, are you married? you have a family? Kids? Right, so, oh, uh, dude, I'm, I'm pretty much doing everything. I'm working 80 hours a week, dude. I'm waking up a day, da, 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 da. and then he's like, and I'm like, oh, and you, you married? Yep, yeah, married, two kids. Wow, can I ask you a personal question? Uh, I mean, dude, you're working 80 hours a week. You're waking up at 5 a.m. You're going to bed at 11 p.m. because of the gym closed down, and you get the whole balance, like balance with the family thing. Like, dude, how do you do it? Like, does that put you in a tough position? Obviously, in, in what way though? So you see how I did that? That's a killer question. You should always ask that on these calls for gym owners. Because they're always, you know, I'm assuming they're, they're waking up at five and they're fucking burned out. They're working for 20 hours. They have no margins. They're doing everything all this stuff. You, you know what I'm saying, right? So now we've gone through the why now. The, any other reason? And then after that, we're going to move on to the desire. It's pretty easy. Gotcha. So what revenue do you want your gym to be at? Gotcha. How many members would that be? Gotcha. And then what would be your target profit? Like, what do you want profit each month, month to month? Okay, great. And then when you think about that gym and that level of revenue, also, like, what do you kind of want your day to look like? Like, do you want this to get to the point to where you're not having to do everything yourself and you're working on the business, not in the business, and your gym is like a brick and mortar asset that's paying you cash flow independent of your time? Or what does your vision look like there? Okay. And then you also ask the, the good old dude, can I ask you another personal question? And I don't know who the person you sell for his name is. Let's say his name's Rob. You know, one of the things that's really important to me and also important to Rob is not just helping you build a business that's building you wealth but also one that's empowering you to live whatever lifestyle that you want to live. I know you mentioned earlier, you know, 80 hour weeks, you know, obviously you're, you're the super dad and you're the provider of the family. Um, for me, like for you, when you think about that and like what you want your life to look like, like what are the non-monetary goals? Like what are the personal goals you want your business to allow you to achieve? Because those to us is just as important as the monetary aspect as well. You know, so like you're going to flesh all of that out. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. So I know I just like uh, hammered you, but, um, you know, I was kind of listening to this and I just, it's like, I just feel like you're kind of a little slow with your questions and you're sort of like, I, I'm like, I'm like, where is this call going? When you listen to one of my calls, it's very much like I'm driving the call forward. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So let's, let's try to get into your pitch. I mean, it's going to be hard for me to edit your pitch because I don't really know what you're I, mean, I don't know like the program. More with us, right? Long-term increased customer lifetime value, right? So that's going to look at the very ends here, but it's definitely going to that. But 
what about, and I appreciate all that, like, there's a lot of business stuff, like, like, I don't know, what about you personally, Aaron? Like, I can only imagine this is had, like, an impact on you and the wife, I guess, as well. Yes, and, um, very challenging. It's a good question. I'll take a minute here today, Aaron, if you don't mind. Um, we've got, uh, just my wife. Uh, having steady sales flow, that's gotten us into this situation. So now the question is, how do we put the right systems in place so we can then avoid burnout and actually like get more time back with the family and doing those like, those things that you want to be doing like because business isn't supposed to be a vehicle that burns us out it's supposed to be something that helps us build wealth and like you were doing prior like have us live the lifestyle that you want to be yep. um, and that's the systems and processes and consistency and predictability right yep. and we can do those things and that's a privilege right it's work in the beginning for sure um yep. Yep. but then that burnout comes when there's no light at the end of the tunnel and that's where we're at right now so the only light at the end of the tunnel is possibly having to develop yeah right? yep. but what if there's a way right that's the question it's like how do we start putting these pieces together um i actually think really can i I want to tell you a little bit about like because this is very similar to one of our partners, um, yep. Josh, who he started working with us last year in August, right? So I showed him zero. He pushed him to he had worked with a number of other marketing companies, he tried all himself, or like he was kind of like pushing and prodding, especially with COVID, like it just wasn't working. He was like step away and create a different offer that is more valuable. And you so you can also like it's my eyeballs on you. So you have that lead flow of people are saying, wow, this is new, this is different. This is about this gives you the opportunity to say to people, well, if you just want to shop and you're just looking for fitness, you know, like you can go check. Uh dude, I mean, I don't know if you can adjust this, but I would like Put your camera down a little bit. Dude, I know, I know. it's been it's been bothering me. I gotta figure out a new spot. Well, I, I honestly like your setup even just as right now as you're talking. This is a hotel room, so oh well. <laughs> yeah, I don't like Yeah, I mean it just it just that's I think I was trying to think like because it looks like you're like, I don't know, like your pot it's like your posture is kind of weird. So huh. It's a, not that that's going to make you a ton more sales, but. Check out like everything we're going to do. This is what we have to offer. And we know that we're worth it because we offer this, right? And we're helping craft that offer. Right now, what's working really, really well for our partners is um, we've been building the lifestyle transformation. And what's cool about that is that it's not a challenge. There's no end in sight. So it implies continuing on. And that way, when you sell that 12, 12 week, or 12, 12 week. So I think that when we sell that for $1,200 up front, we also don't need a marketing budget because the first time we sell people, even after our commission, you sell 1.2 people in a month and you're in the black. Understand. Everything else on top of that is gravy. That's consistency, that's predictability, and it's profitability. Those three things lend, lend to scale. You can, you can grow easily that way, right? Because it's constantly going back into the business. All right. Well, that doesn't look too bad. And if the calendar. So the big thing with the pitch, you know, it's hard for me to edit pitches when I don't really know what the program is. And I also like hesitate. It's like if I give you all this feedback on what the change, like you might not be able to change it because it's like, you know, your program can only. Like your owner might not want to change the program, right? So, but generally, I mean, the biggest things, it, obviously, it's all in the training, but we do the high level promise, we get them to take notes, and then it's like we want to go through it slowly. So it's like, gotcha. So you have pen and pad, you know, write out one through four. And you then, like, you have them write out the one, two, three, four. You like literally watch them do it. It's like, okay, great. So the very first thing we're going to do, do with you is X. So next to number one, Right, you know, offer or whatever the hell it is, right? Like your 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 gym offer. And then it's like, so you know how earlier you were telling me this, and it was like kind of causing this in your issue, and you're now you're pointing out this. Well, be, like here's the problem with that, right? When your when your offer is low price, you can't liquidate it on ads, you can't get people to come in, you can't scale the budget. So what happens is like you're either going in the red and you're getting you have to invest money to get customers, which isn't the end of the world, but it's not good especially if you're low budget or the campaign just don't work all together. So instead we have our clients do is we have our clients do X, which leads to benefit and then ultimately benefit of that benefit. benefit. Does that make sense? And then it's like, yes. And it's like, okay, great, Dan. Um, like, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, that's not how I would say. I would have to say, does that make sense? Cool. Like, what are your thoughts on that? And so I'm going to get this like engagement and I want them to like, like you'll see it, like they'll be writing it down and you ask, what do you make sense? Yes. What are your thoughts on that? And you kind of see, they start to internalize it. That's such a small distinction, but like, this is what sometimes, especially a gym owner who maybe doesn't understand marketing, like obviously your program is probably better than what he tried in the past. But then what happens is he kind of gets to the end. He's like, ah, I just think this is the same. I'm scared. Does that make sense? Whereas like when you take that time for them to internalize it and you even throw in the like, so do you see how based on what you tried earlier with your marketing agency, that could have never worked because you never had the right offer in the first place? Do you see how that's also the same for this that you tried, this that you tried, that this that you tried? 
Gotcha. So you also see how like once you get this place, like it's a lot easier. This is the biggest reason why those things didn't work. It's honestly the biggest reason why you feel like you're kind of trading tires. Like, do you do you get what I'm saying here? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Oh yeah, totally. So you see what I'm saying? Like, I I really get these like buy-in. Like by the time I get to the end, like I kind of know what's gonna happen. Does that make sense? So that's very, very key here. I just want to make sure you're doing that, but like your tonality and like your delivery, it seems pretty good on this pitch. So um, can I ask a quick question about the uh, the pitch? Yeah, man. Do you use the same four pillars like every time and then you kind of like change up the order of them or do you just kind of try to change how it fits to the specific client? Uh, yeah, I mean, dude, generally, it depends on what you're selling, but generally you're always going to use the same four for the clients, right? Now, you know, there's nothing that says you can't just do whatever the hell you want, right? So like, for instance, when I was selling full-time, I would say 95% of the time, I would just use the same ones every single time. Now, how I would explain them would be different every single time. Like 80% of it would be the same, but then 20% of it would be tailored. But then like, I, you know, there was some times where literally, like I was, I was dealing with a client where I knew we could help them, but they were in like, like for instance, when I sold one of the companies that sold for full time, we helped coaches grow their business. And most everybody we'd work with is either new or at like 10 to 10, five to 10 K a month or 20 K a month, right? Like they were in kind of that area. And there was one guy that came on and I just remember him and he was doing 200 grand a month. And I knew we could help him, but like, the pitch wasn't going to work for him at 200 grand a month. So I just made up my own pitch on the spot. And I mean, nothing, you know, and when I say made it up, I don't want you to think that I just made up something. Like I just like false promise that we could help him. I just had to kind of like, I knew we could help him. It was just going to be way different than what I was pitching before. So I literally just made up four pillars right on the spot. And it was, it was good. So Hopefully that answers your question. I mean, it's generally you're going to say the same things, but there's nothing to say you can't switch it around or do whatever you want. Uh, and then talk to me a little bit about, do you guys manage the ads or is that? Yes. Just, okay. So you'll manage them. You'll tweak them as needed. You'll make changes as things go along. A hundred, I think it's 12 weeks challenge i like the idea of that a lot i like what you said what do you what do you recommend charging for that 1200 okay. um talk to me a little bit about um how how far these discovery calls go how well you get to know us um is is this it and then i sign up or are you like now we're going to spend a little more time get to know you well, generally this is it, but how do you feel? Like I just covered with you the four things that we need to get, to, we need to do to get you to the point where X, do you feel like that's what you need to get your gym to 300 members a month? See what I mean? That's how I handle that, right? That's not how I handled that. <laughs> what are you looking for? Yeah, that was not good. Well, I don't know what that More was. More time? Yeah, so you're very like, uh, you know, I don't know how to explain this, but you, you, you fabricate a false confidence. I'm sorry to say that, but you do, right? Okay. So it's like this, like, real lackadaisical, chill, like, well, what are you looking for? You know, like, you're, you're, you're kind of, like, trying to posture a little bit. I don't do that. You know, and what's interesting is like, I have a huge, like, you know, obviously, as you can imagine, if I get on a sales call, I have a huge presence, right? But it never will seem combative and it never, it's, it's, I'm, I'm super fun on the calls. I'm going to have a good time. I, I, I drill down. I, I mean, I get everything I need. Like I, I lead like a motherfucker on these calls and, but I'm all, I'm always just so with them. Like I'm, I'm definitely like their advocate. It's not. But I, and I'm also totally myself. Like I would wager to say, because I am so comfortable on sales calls, and I've done so many, I've trained so many times, I'm probably more myself on a sales call than I am in like real life. Like, cause I'm, I'm just so comfortable in that to where I'm truly my truest self in a sense. That's a little woo woo, but that is true. 
So with you, like I can talk to you now and then I listen to this and it's like, it seems different. Like I see like a, like as a different guy. Right. And so you're kind of like real chill and lackadaisical and you've been like that a little bit the entire time. And maybe that's just your, your personality, but I think, uh, I just think if you were just, you dropped the facade and you were a little bit more like engaged and listening to the person and just like with them, I, you know, I know that's a, it's a very general piece of advice kind of vague there, but there's something going on with your, like how you feel like you got to show up. No, you, you nailed it. And I even felt it on that too. Like, and especially like when I got off as well, and it's been something that I felt also like probably over the last like couple of weeks as well. I think it's like me trying to make tweaks in the process and not feeling comfortable with it, you know? So putting that on, I felt it, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And I guess I needed somebody else to tell me. So thank you. Right. I wanted to be really specific to what we're doing. I'll give me more time. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of sales, is there, I do have, uh, you know, just because it's not just me, are there, is there an academy? Do you have scripts? Uh, so I can tell by his like questions that the because like you just explained the pitch and now he's asking questions right okay I can tell by the questions he's asking the pitch wasn't very good because like he's like do you have scripts do you have like I, I don't know it just it seems like he's he didn't get it I, I just that's my impression with this guy even when I kind of skipped through it and I just listen, I know, I know I barely listened to it, right? But like, even when I listened to a little bit of your pitch and I looked at his face, I, I don't know. I was like, I bet this guy ends up not getting it. Right. So then, and then he's asking these questions that are like, eh, like that seems like a question that should be pretty obvious when you explain the thing, you know? Yeah, we have a whole portal that we're walking through step by step everything that it is that needs to know to be successful for the best. So about it. all of the marketing, all of the sales info, the trainings and scripts, um, all of the fulfillment, and then all of the retention and attention. Do you get involved in a content like term? So, nutrition and actual challenge, you know, challenge lifestyle content that you talk about. So, it's training. So, like you said, like a professor chat. Uh, we have templates for you for nutrition if you like, and then there's trainings in there um, on the accountability piece as well. Like, so what is what goes into the topic? Got it, got it. Um, And then, lastly, talk to me about what's the agreement type, how long, and how much uh, does it cost? Yes. Cool. So, I mean, I just make sure you do the temp check at this point. Now, also, when like you're in the committing phase and they're asking questions, how you're supposed to do this is like, you pitch and then you're like, cool. So does, does pillar four make sense? Gotcha. Like what questions do you have? Not just about pillar four, but like just about the entire thing. Like what questions do you have specifically? Then he starts asking questions, right? You answer the question in one to two sentences and you end with that, does that make sense? Okay. Or even one word, right? And, and you kind of did a pretty good job seemingly at that. But I would end it with, does it make sense? Cool, what else? What are the questions? I always do it like that. I, you know, when I'm, it's like interesting. When I say what else, what are the questions? It's like I'm asking a question to prompt him to ask a question. It actually maintains me in leadership. Because then what, what's going to happen is he's going to start asking questions. Okay. And then what's going to happen? And I want to say, cool, make sense? He's like, yeah. What else? What are the questions? He's like, I don't have any questions. How do you feel? So like it, it because what happened here is like, you can see this is very subtle. He's asking you questions and then he's like, okay, great. And so like, do I need to decide now? As I said, okay, great. Also. Uh, and then he's like, what's the price? And so he's got the momentum in the call. It's very subtle, but he's now leading the call. And it's very interesting because we are taught to get to the pitch and then, and this is true. Like you are kind of supposed to do this. You, you pitch, you ask them what questions do they have, and then you let them ask the questions, you just answer it and let them pull just whatever information they need to complete the picture in their mind. That is what needs to happen. But a lot of times that turns into them taking over leadership of the call. Because like really what the sale, what the prospect wants to do, especially if they're like high D, they're just like, let me take control of this. Let me ask my questions so I can understand it. So I can make a decision, right? That's like what I want to do. I'm like, I really just want to get through this. I'm like, I hate wasting time. And so our job as a salesperson 
is to help them understand that it's in their best interest for us to ask them some questions to get better context. And therefore, the call will actually go faster, more efficiently, and better for them by doing so. Right? So anyways, um, that little distinction there at the very end will help you keep control of the call. Because like right now, you're in a pattern of answering his questions, right? He's leading. And then next thing you know, he's like, cool. So is this the best number to reach you at? And is that your best email? Can you send me a proposal? Can you, can you meet next week? All right, dude, well, this is great. I mean, I, I think I get everything I need, you know? See what I mean? Whereas like when, when it's a little bit subtle, but when he's asking, them, when you say, what questions do you have? He answers the question, say, makes sense. He says, yes, cool, what other questions? Right, very, very subtle. And it's also tonality and energetically. That is a huge difference maker. You filter out all the questions and then it's cool. How do you feel? And even if he asks his last question's price, be like, cool, we'll, we'll, let's cover that next. Real fast, just for context. Would you mind if I asked you like, how do you feel? Like we cover four things in terms of implementing into your gym to be able to get you to 300 members a month. Like, do you feel like that's what you needed? Not necessarily the program, but the four things we cover. Do you feel like that's what you need to be able to get this to 150K a month and ultimately 300, month, 300 members a month in your gym? And I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm very like with it, you know? You're a little bit like this, a little silent, a little bit like, yeah, we'll give you more time. You know, I'm more like, I'm not like, you know, in his freaking face, but I'm like, I'm like there. Like I'm still leading the call, okay? I'm not being kind of deflected here. You're, uh, there's something about your energy that is a little off. So again, then I'm gonna hit him with the tie up. And again, like you see how I deliver that with my tonality and certainty, it's like, I'm going to get like, is there any uncertainty? And if there is, I'm like, God, you know, what's going on, right? I'm just gonna get it. It's the objection handling before the objection handling. Cause we're, we're objection handling on the thesis, not necessarily on the product. Okay, but let's let's see how we'll go into the next phase. So all the questions are honestly, Aaron, like I gotta give you like a round of applause because it's kind of a breath of fresh air. Um, if nobody that I've spoken to, I mean, you must have talked to a lot of people already. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, you're fighting for like so much simple calling. Like I'm gonna research everything about it. Yeah, you know, I understand. I, I totally get that. Um, but you will be. I don't know if you'll be surprised by this or not. But you are like hands answering the first question uh, to ever come back prepared to some call. Uh, let's give it a note. Yeah. Like, it's disappointing actually. A little bit, um, but it gives me a lot of confidence in you as an as operator, right? Yeah. Um, so it's cool. Um, yeah. So getting started with not what it looks like, right? So we work on paper sign a model, right? So initially we do one time seventy five grand. Keep it. Yep. Yeah, that's the rest of the delivery on marketing, every sales service. Um, yep. Then the nine hundred dollar ad spend a month is what we require as a minimum. Yep. At least for the first months, right? To get those nine hundred dollars a month. Now, and as you commissioned earlier on the paper sign, right? The only time we get paid in the future is when you sign up a new client that we bring you. Right? So for group training, it's one month worth of service. So I'll explain that. So this is interesting. Yes. So let me try. Let's see if this works. Can you just? Yeah. <coughs> so one month worth of service for group fitness, right? So that means Dan signs up for twelve hundred, right? For 12 weeks, which is three months, right? So you would keep 800 per sale, two dollars a day, 400 one time. And then when they roll into your 325 a month for however long, you keep all of that, right? So it's a, it's a percentage. So what is that like? Uh, 25%? Yeah. So I don't want you to think of it would technically be like 30 percent, but I want you to think about it as a percentage because if Dan walks in and signs up for, let's just say, like a thousand dollars a month for a year, right? Yeah. Like whatever it is for like one on one training, uh, we would still just take the first month. Got uh, it. Yeah. Got it. So if it's one on one, we just take one half. So whatever the value is, whether it's a 12-week challenge or it's personal training or whatever, it's going to be some kind of stuff that you already have preset. Yes. Awesome. I like that. Yeah, this is it. So like that personal training example, right? So it's a thousand dollars a month for 12 months, right? We got to pay 500 bucks and you would keep 11 five. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Super yeah. Right. yeah. That makes a ton of sense. It's a really good way to do it. Um, cool. Okay. Anyway, um, and then there's also one thing I want to mention for you because I know you're like the, the, the position financially, um, we do a guarantee. Yeah. So we have an agreement as well. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have given that yet. And fair. Oh, 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 oh. Honestly, if you can pay for time assistance, as far as I know, like, we're really going to do it, we do well. Um, so, four months. Is so, you're, you're only giving that because you feel like you lost the call already. For a minute term. Right, four months. You can do everything I'm going to tell you to do. Everything I'm going to ask you, right? And if you're selling eight to ten people a month, right? We'll buy that by 800, like, we'll make it more than what I'm sharing here. You can make it up one month. But if for some reason we let you down, the leads aren't there, the marketing's not there, whatever it is, right? And you follow everything that we lay out very clearly for you in the agreement, and we can't get you. There's no pay, reason to say anything. $10,000, four months, right? So, double your initial investment. So guys, here's everything I did for you. you do all this, all this. Can I ask how you would, if someone asks about it later, right? So not drop it right away. Uh, they ask um, about, if they ask about it, that is what it is. But uh, yeah, if they ask about it, then like you can tell them. 
and I'll tell you how I tell them. But yeah, if they don't ask about it, I wouldn't even mention it. And then I would use it as an objection hand. Right. right. So like I would use it as a looping down close. Uh, like I'm throwing in a guarantee that we usually don't do. And so that's one part. And then the other part is if they do just direct, do you have a guarantee? I'd say we do have a guarantee. Um, and I, I'll, I'll go over that with you. It, I'm just curious. Is there a specific reason why you're asking? And so I'm going to see if there's a hidden bit object. Well, I don't work with anybody without guarantees or, oh, like I just, you know, and you could even throw, is there a specific reason why you're asking? And so like, I, and I just want to make sure like there's something I say struck a red flag with you or it was just that just a general question of you just, you know, trying to figure out what's included and not included in the service. Gotcha. So you still feel like you said earlier, this is hundred percent work for you. You're just wondering if there's a guarantee just in case. See what I mean? So like I, I made sure before I answered the question that there was a tie down on the certainty that this is the right thing, now's the right time. And then I answered the question. It's kind of like, because you want to know, like, are you asking for a guarantee because you don't think this is going to work? Or are you asking for a guarantee just out of general housekeeping, which is totally fun? You know? Yeah, that was just way too much, though, for just throwing okay. in there. Right? Um, next steps. Uh, yeah, I um, mean, but how do you feel? Do you feel, again, like, he's like, next steps. Well, how do you feel? Do you feel like this is what you need to be able to blank? Right? That's because, like, He's saying next steps, you're probably thinking, shit, maybe I'm going to close this guy. Maybe you do close this guy. Huh? But um, you're like, okay, well, you start, you start to give him the next steps. He's like, well, okay, well, this has been great information, dude. How do I get in touch with you? Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, well, how do you feel? You know? And then I'm going to, if he, if he is certain, then I'll enroll. If he's not certain, I'm going to get him certain, then I'm going to enroll him. But now I'm shifting the conversation to the conversation that needs to be had, which is, are you 100% certain that this is the right thing, now's the right time? If he's bought into that, he knows he needs to do it, then enrolling is a byproduct. Do you have more conversations with these guys? With other folks? Yes, I've got about Christine, I've got a check, that's a check. So I've got all this information back. So that's my next step. So I'll talk to you after I do that. Um, I also meant on the side of like any other people that you want to talk to at the marketing side, or how do you feel just about like what we've been over here today? No, it feels great. It, um, it's probably different than what I'm seeing out there. So that's, that's yeah, so how do you feel about what we went over today is not really that great because he said, oh, this has been super helpful, right? No, it's like, are you bought into the thesis? Make sense? So it's like, do you feel like this is what you need to be able to get to X? He's like, yes, gotcha. So talking to Christine aside, personally, you're 100%. All right, so... Uh, I guess, I mean, if you're in, I'm just curious, like, what do you think Christine's going to think? I know she's obviously you want to honor whatever, you know, input she has, but what do you think she's going to say? Do you feel like she'll be supportive? When you tell her the price and, and the comp structure, what do you think she'll think of that? That's a, that's a good one, right? Uh, do you think she'll have any red flags or any questions? Okay, great. So just for clarity's sake, if you talk with her and she says, look, uh, whoever, you know, John, Look, John, you know, I'm, I'm totally done with whatever you want to do. If you'd like this to the right move to improve the marketing of our business, 100%, I think you should do it. Um, if she says that and totally checks out and she wants to do it, what do you think is our next step from there? If anything but not moving forward is not going to work. Okay. So, again, we need to dig into that a little bit. Intrigue you too. Um, would be great to talk to somebody on the marketing side to get to understand more about what that might end up coming up looking like. Okay, so when you said working life, what specifically do you mean? Yeah. Um, so if I'm gonna, at some point, I'm going to ask these questions to somebody because I'm not skilled. Um, but I want to know, hey, is, is the marketing play something that's just pre-designed? Um, is, is it something that's built specifically for our demographic, our avatar? Um, where does it go? How is it, how, how is it managed? Uh, those are kind of things that I'd like to know. Okay. Yeah, I also feel like just to be again, I do feel like that stuff should be answered in the pitch. So like I, again, like my my hypothesis of like them not really understanding shit is kind of still there. So let me ask one, answer one question and ask another question. Yeah. Um, so to answer that demographic, yes, right. Like what we do. So let's say you define them, right? We, we get you to sign awesome, great. You get on board, you can support portal, but get off call, right? We better right? Well, I would have answered. So he's wondering, like, is the creative for our demographic? Does it take into account our location? It's like. 
you got to rewind and you got to like answer that. See, see, the thing is here, he, what's going to happen? So he is a business partner, number one, right? And the, there's sometimes like you can close them even if they have a business partner. But other times, like no matter what's going to happen, dude, you can't do it. So how are you, the best way to close a business partner that nobody talks about is just like closing this person so hard, not necessarily on them giving you your money, but like you want this person to leave the call on fire. Like, dude, we got to work with this company. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. And guess what? If, there, if, if, if this guy is 155 million percent certain that you, he needs to work with you, I guarantee you'll convince the spouse and they're going to come in in a couple of days. See what I mean? Right now, sometimes we can navigate the spouse, get a deposit or something like that. But, you know, again, but even the getting the deposit is a byproduct of him, again, being 100% certain he needs to work with you. So I really believe that that's where we need to improve on this, you know, beyond just injection handling. This is where you need to improve. And um, what's the other thing I was going to say? Yeah, and I, I do think there's some clarity things with your pitch that just aren't happening. Like, you're explaining it, but I think it might be a little bit vague. And, you know, it's like you get it and you think it's simple, but it's a gym owner. He's not good at marketing at all. He's like, I don't get it. Like, what's the ad look like? You know, you're like, uh, don't worry about it. Dude. Like, we're going to just like, you know, you're like, do we do this? Yeah. So I, th I think you get what I'm trying to say here. Because there's a lack of clarity in the pitch. That's where we got in. And obviously, that's all expectations give you the reason you need to get like backends and whatnot to get working. Yeah, but also that's when we start going over. Okay, what does this stuff come to like? They offer that we nail down. The demographics that we nail down. Right. And I think we're having a good idea of you know like older folks, million dollar plus, um, just higher income areas, right? But I think more specific we search for. And then more advice on how do we get how do we open this up possibly to more folks? It's too small to synthesize. Um, like where is the where is the sweet spot going to be for us? Right. Yes, we'll have those conversations. It's gonna be an open dialogue, right? Very rarely does anybody nail this the first time. So I think our team is gonna make tweaks if we need to make tweaks to open things up. We do, right? That's where the weekly check-ins come in. Yep, with your down user. Right? So have those conversations. Then we have to explore too. So yep, but does that help answer that? Yeah, it does. Cool. Yeah, and the question those things. Um it's kind of escaping me at the moment, to be honest with you. <laughs> but it was uh, it was a what's your experience and are you saying you're consulting? Yep, yep. Um so uh I, I was for I was just for 18 years, for 15 years, I have done two things. One is uh consult. Okay, interesting. I don't know what the rest of this call is gonna be. We got three minutes. So hopefully you got some takeaways, dude. I mean, I, I would say if I had to recap. Better discovery for sure, okay? I gave you the whole syntax, I wrote it out for you. You're, you're gonna have to adjust that. Like I've never sold a gym owner personally, but you know, I've sold a bunch of different industries. So I, I know what I gave you more or less is gonna be about 90% there. The perfect, it's gonna fall into a problems for syntax. Now the exact questions, you know, maybe go through advanced fill questions advanced or uh, asking people questions advanced and kind of tailor and pepper in a few of those. But you're going to be able to knock out that grade. Then I think the big opportunity for you is not just in the discovery and just leading it better, but then also in the pitch and just really getting them clear on why this is going to be different, okay? Or why what they tried in the past didn't work, when it's going to be different. And personally, you may need to like write the pitch out on a Google Doc forum. That's what we do for our B2B. Uh, obviously, a lot of people use slides. Um, I'm not totally against that. I like, I like a little kind of custom demo Google doc thing. So it doesn't seem like, you know, when you pull up the slides, I think there's kind of this like, Oh, here comes the pitch. Right. So I, I kind of like to do a Google doc and then I'll pull up tabs of testimonials and case studies. So it kind of seems a little bit more organic and then I've written out everything for them completely customized. And then they're like, Oh dude, then they have this Google doc. So I think there's a example of how I do that in the training. But uh, if that could be something good for you. I don't want to, I don't want to totally throw you off. But overall, I would say, you know, you're, 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 you're obviously good. Like, you're not bad. Uh, but I do think your energy, being a little bit more engaged, not trying to, like, posture, just be yourself with the person, okay? Discovery, clarity and certainty in the pitch, and then, like, better tie-downs at the end. Oh, so throughout the pitch, also, better buy-in that we talked about. And then at the end, the temp check, and then better buy into the thesis. Okay. And again, like he, you know, he started asking questions at the end. There was a lot of times I would have said, you know, like totally, we could talk about next steps. How do you feel, for instance? Right. So I'm always going back to, do you believe this is the right thing? Now is the right time. Does that make sense?
Was this helpful, guys? So helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Gotcha. Did you guys Great. thank you? Enjoy it. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, Cole. Thank you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Thanks, we will see you here soon. I guess I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Let's go. Later.